An emerging infection uh, is an infection that is brand new. Uh, there are infections that have been with us for centuries, smallpox, tuberculosis. At one time in history of evolution, they were an emerging infection. But right now in the 21st century, they're an established infection. But every once in a while, you get a brand new infection. Sometimes that infection has a profound global health impact. Sometimes it's a curiosity. Let me give you some examples of emerging infections. HIV AIDS is the prototype of an emerging infection because it's new, certainly new, that came in in the 20th century, was first recognized in 1981, but was likely around for decades before. The human species has never had a pandemic of AIDS before, so it's a classical emerging infection of profound global health impact. SARS was also an emerging infection, but it lasted for one year and dissipated spontaneously. Those are emerging. Re-emerging is an infection that has been around, but reappears under different circumstances, either in a different location, in a different form, or in a different uh, region. So let's talk about that. West Nile virus has been around Africa and the Middle East for centuries. Only several years ago did it come to the United States, likely by either a bird, a mosquito, or a person who landed in New York City, likely at Kennedy or LaGuardia Airport, and the first cases were reported in New York City. Now it's endemic at a relatively low level in the United States. So West Nile virus in the United States is a re-emerging infection as opposed to a brand new infection. Another one is drug-resistant malaria or multiple drug-resistant TB. It has re-emerged in a drug-resistant form. So when you think about infections, you've got to think about, is it really brand new, or is it just another version of something that's been around for a long time?